Pay your attention, please. Great, let's get this started. Welcome to the, I believe, final high school concert of the year. Um, it's, it's been a, a long year, I can't believe uh, it's already over. Um, it's sort of one of those things like the days feel very, very long and then the weeks feel very short, you know. Um, we got to the end of the year and I, I just I can't believe it's here already. I'm Mr. Patterson, I am the orchestra director. Um, over there is Mr. Jacob Hartman, um, who runs the band, Mr. Ben Weaver, the assistant band director, and um, Sam Weibel, back there, the assistant everything director, uh, in my opinion. Um, he just helps out everywhere. Um, I'm sure if you are here, you know one of us. That is all of us. Um, and this is the Spring High School Instrumental Concert. We have four fantastic groups for you. Um, we have uh, the Select String Quintet, uh, over here, who will um, be our first group up. They are performing uh, three short pieces that they themselves arranged. Um, we we kind of talked about chords and how to assign chord tones to various groups, and they found songs with existing chord progressions, and they wrote their own versions of it, which is a very high-level musical skill. And then we also have the very high-level musical skill of performing in a group where no one else has your part. Um, and so this, this small, dedicated little group, uh, I've had a lot of fun working with and, and working on these arrangements and, and, um, and, and getting them ready for performance. Um, this is a, a small group of kids that have been really, really helpful to me. Um, they uh, were at the fifth grade performance on Thursday, helping the fifth graders out, performing for the fifth graders. They've been putting in hours and hours of, of work every week, and they have just three short little arrangements to kick off our show before I hand things over to the band. Uh, before we get started, though, uh, a few quick notes. If you have not noticed or smelled it, there is a concession stand in the back. Uh, all proceeds go due to do go to the music boosters and support the music boosters. So if the smell of popcorn tempts you, go um, back there in between any, uh, any of the pieces and numbers to go pick yourself up some. Um, I would also like to thank um, uh, the administrators here. Um, Carol Bebout, I know I saw earlier today, or yep, there she is right back there. Uh, the ever supportive Carol Bebout and any other administrator who might be in the room that I just had not spotted yet. Um, the, the support I get in this district, and we get, I should say, as a music department, is, is truly fantastic, and um, I would like to, to thank them for that. But you did not come here to listen to me talk. You came here to listen to kids play music. So uh, Select Strings is going to start off with a excerpt from a Tchaikovsky symphony arranged by Skylar Price.
This next one is a old Broadway tune, apparently. I did not know this one before Abigail Hankey picked it out of a book. It's called Don't Forget About 127th Street. Um, I had never heard of it before, and yet it's the one of these three that has been stuck in my head the most. So uh, you might argue that it's the one that's the best choice, because I cannot get this one out of my head. All right, this is Abigail Hankey's arrangement of Don't Forget About 127th Street. And lastly, but not leastly, in fact, arguably bestly, who knows, uh, Sophia Hart's A Shoken Farewell, an Irish fiddle ballad. Thank you very much, Select Strings. Next group in front of you is the Harding Stardusters in their lovely uh, red jackets, timeless, stylus classics there. And these students <clears throat> begin rehearsing during the second semester 
and we uh, typically meet after school. It's a volunteer group, any instruments. I love jazz music. It's uh, the only unique musical art form created in America. It's part of our heritage, and there's just a lot of um, creative ways to express ourselves musically through jazz. So I really hope you enjoy Stardusters. We have a, a special guest on the piano. He's actually an alumni of Harding High School. Uh, Jim Besh is joining us. So we'd uh, like to right now take a moment to thank Jim Besh for his help today covering piano. And he also, along with being an alumni, was also a member of Stardusters. I won't, uh, I won't make him say what years or anything like that. But uh, again, thank you so much for being here in May during the craziness of the end of the year and for supporting these wonderful students. We have some of the best and brightest of Harding High School represented on this stage today. So we're very fortunate and grateful for that. So we're going to kick it off with our first number, Stardust. It's our theme song. And this one will feature solos Don Taylor and Audrey Simon. We hope you enjoy Stardust. If you would uh, see some of the original copies of the music for that, you would know that that piece has been around for a number of years, probably since Jim was in the ensemble just a few years ago. Um, anyways, our next number is Song for San Miguel. This one will fe feature uh, two flute players. Since COVID, we've opened up our instrumentation to anybody that's interested and uh, willing to learn about jazz. So we have uh, some lovely uh, flute players, some of the best, to help us out with this song on solo. And that would be Annabelle Johnson and Olani Holden on the solos. So feel free to applaud at the conclusion of the solo.
One of the things I love about jazz is the contrasting styles. We started with a ballad slow piece, this did a Latin piece, now we're moving on to something that's more in the swing genre of jazz, and that would be a song called Blues for a New Day. This one will feature Don Taylor on the trumpet, and uh, members, we will play backgrounds on the solo section, just so you guys know. All right, we hope you enjoy Blues for a New Day. Thank you very much. We've done a ballad, we've done some Latin, we've done some swing. Now we're going to do some elevator music. This next one uh, sounds like elevator music to me. It's called uh, Fly Me to the Moon. Many of you guys probably will recognize the uh, tune and melody from this one. So we hope you enjoy Fly Me to the Moon featuring um, a little, uh, little interlude solos by our drummer, Jackson Greenwald.
at this time. We'd like to honor a few of our outstanding jazz students with some of our senior awards. As always, it's a tough decision. We have so many seniors who we've forged such a positive relationship over the years and that have done so much for us and just given us so much of their time and commitment. So we don't make these decisions lightly, but our first award is entitled the Woody Herman Award. And this is a famous, famous jazz clarinet player. And this is just somebody that um, offers passion in, in jazz and just has a natural ability with jazz and somebody that has, um, in our situation, gone above and beyond to make uh, rehearsals work when they're not even in school here. They uh, attend school off-site at Tri-Rivers and have uh, made a point to come back this senior year to join us for, uh, for rehearsals and uh, our performances this year. So we're so proud to announce this year's Woody Herman Jazz Award winner, Josh Smith. And a top honor bestowed upon a senior jazz member at Harding High School is called the Louis Armstrong Award, famous jazz trumpet player. And <clears throat> I always say that a jazz band is only as strong as your rhythm section. That is the fundamental building block to everything jazz, your piano, your bass, your um, drum set. So our award winner for this year comes from that section. And this student uh, just has a knack for what their instrument is supposed to sound like. And it's almost as if they were listening to their instrument coming out of the womb and have just been around it and playing it for so long. And we are so fortunate to have him in our music department here. This year's uh, Louis Armstrong Jazz Award winner belongs to Jackson Greenewalt. Jackson has uh, aspirations to continue on uh, playing his instrument after high school, which is one of our uh, favorite things to hear as, as teachers. So hopefully we'll see him behind the drum set of a, a famous band here in a few years down the road. We're going to close our program for as far as uh, Stardusters with um, a classic. The, the students love playing it every, every year. Me, maybe after 12 years, I'm a little tired of hearing it. But we're going to play it for you, and you're going to enjoy it. Uh, this song is called Baja Breeze.
Thank you very much. Next up will be the orchestra. I'll pass it off to Mr. Patterson. While the kids uh, get rearranged, I'll talk about our first uh, pair of pieces, a couple of numbers from the opera Carmen, conducted by Mr. Sam Weibel, the assistant orchestra director, and performed by the Harding High School Orchestra. I'll just let them go ahead and get to it. For this next piece, uh, if you were at the Christmas concert, uh, you will remember the first part about this. I told the full story then. But uh, when my grandfather died, we did commission a cello uh, concerto, a cello and bell choir concerto for him. And um, I, I found the old, the old piece and I arranged it for string orchestra and we performed the second movement back in uh, the Christmas concert. Um, then uh, we kind of put it aside for a bit to focus on the competition stuff, which uh, we did. This group in front of you did get a superior rating in competition uh, in, uh, in the spring, um, so props to them for that. I will also want to really quickly shout out to the uh, Grant Middle School Band, Choir, and Orchestra who all got superior ratings on this stage at the middle school competition over the past couple of days right here. Um, so a real quick round of applause for them if any of them happen to be here.
Uh, but then once the, uh, the competition stuff was, uh, was handled and, and focused away, I pulled out the third movement of that suite for cello and bells, and we, uh, we worked on it and we mastered it. And um, now presenting both the second and third movement of Sweet and Cello and Bells will be the uh, Harding High School Orchestra with uh, featured soloist Sara Ortez Garagos from Spain and uh, Parker Zint from Marion.
All right, I have uh, people to recognize. Um, first and foremost, I would like to recognize parents. Uh, those parents of you in the audience, these kids would not be here without you. Um, they would not uh, have made it this far in their musical journey without your support. Um, whether it is you know the financial support of, of getting them the instruments, whether it's the physical support of encouraging them to practice and play and taking them to concerts and coming them to concerts, you know when they signed up for an instrument in fifth grade strings, you you signed up for an eight-year commitment without really realizing it. Um, and uh, there is actually one parent in the audience who's kind of signed up for a 20-year commitment without really realizing it, um, because uh, this particular strings, fifth grade strings player uh, went on and did it so much that he ended up getting a job teaching it. Um, my dad is in the audience right now, and um, you know, <laughs> might, this might be you in 10 years. Um, but. Yeah, no, he did. Uh, he did come because he wanted to see the piece that was was written for his father, uh, written uh, in commemoration of his father, and so he he did the drive up here to see that. And I am so incredibly thankful for you guys uh, for indulging me in this little personal project. Um, it's I, it's not an easy piece. Um, they did look into publishing this back in the 70s when it was written and it, it did get rejected by all publishers for being uh, just too difficult for, for student groups not having a, a good, good place in the market. So this was not an easy project for them to take on and I'm so incredibly thankful to you guys for, for indulging me in this personal project. <clears throat> that said, uh, I, we are going to recognize all of the seniors later. Um, in, in both groups fairly soon actually, but much like the jazz band had their awards, there is the National Orchestra Award as well, um, which is always, and I promise you, is always a difficult decision. I understand there is a conspiracy theory among the students that I always gave it to a viola player, um, which I assure you is not true. It's just coincidence that the past <clears throat> several have gone to a viola player, but there is no viola senior today, so um, that conspiracy is dead. Um, instead, I, I gave it to somebody who, if you have been paying attention, has been very busy tonight. They were in, in with select strings playing cello, they were in with the jazz band playing bass, and then they ran back up and were in with the full orchestra, and they have been this multi-instrumentalist to do everything and anything in orchestra for eight years now, um, except when and they had to turn me down because they were instead going to be the wizard. Um, Parker Zent, please stand up. The National Orchestra Award goes to you, ma'am. And upon giving the reward, I remember that last year in Select Strings, you played viola, didn't you? Yeah, so I... I um, the, the, the multi-instrumentalist has continued the conspiracy. It is still alive. Maybe I just give it to a viola player every time. Here is the National Orchestra Award uh, plaque. Here is the actual, and I'm just not going to give you a box. Um, I, I will give you the box too, don't worry. Um, and if you, if you look at Parker's shirt, uh, you will see that they are off to THE Ohio State University. Uh, my alma mater. Have a box. Alright. Alright, great. Um, we will get to all of the seniors and all of the, the other recognitions. Um, after our final piece, um, every year I ask the seniors uh, what, uh, what do they want to do as their send-off, the final piece of their final concert. And I, I open it up uh, to anything, um, anything at any point in their career. And this year the seniors decided to send themselves off. They wanted to do a piece called M to the Third Power. Um, which is, I mean, when you hear it, I think you'll understand why this was their favorite that they ever did over the past four years. So here is the senior song, M to the Third Power.
Let's talk about my four. All right, so these are the seniors. They have survived many, many, many years of me annoying them. And yet they still stuck around. I met them all in fifth grade. Mostly, let's see, let's see, how well I remember. George Washington, George Washington. Harrison? Harrison, no. This is a very long time ago. I don't know, I'm just going to go down the line at this point. Half? I forget. McKinley? Ah, McKinley, all right. First try. First try. Definitely my first try. These are my four seniors. Um, uh, Parker's in, I've already talked enough about. I'm um, going to the Ohio State University. J.D. Bonetta, going to the Marion Technical uh, uh, College. Uh, Adrian Shipley going to the Ohio State University, and Faith Wheeler who forgot to bring any merch for the Bowling Green University. I have for all of you a rose to thank you for all of your time with me and the orchestra and all that you have done. And uh, rose and um, one more rose. You should have brought like a bowling ball for Bowling Green. If you don't have a shirt, you should have brought a bowling ball. All right. These guys have been, been, been so key. I, I don't know what I'd do without them um, bothering me, um, helping, being leaders in the violin section, being people who come in during their lunch to set up for the day, being people who um, are so busy that I can't get them to do what I need them because they're already being the wizard or whatever. Uh, I have so many stories of these guys and I could keep you here till 10 p.m. talking about them, but uh, I don't think you'd like that unless you are literally their parents. So I will try and hold myself back and hand this over to the band directors who have their own seniors to recognize. There he is. All right, senior band students coming up to the front of the stage here. It's a joke I tell every year. Their first test is if they figured out alphabetical order after uh, 12 years of high school and elementary and middle school and all that. All right, I think we got our alphabetical order sorted out here. Uh, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight seniors here represented in front of you. It is 
no easy feats, giving of so much time and effort and enthusiasm over so many years. Many of these students before you have been in band since they were in the sixth grade. And in fact, most of them, I believe. And um, it's just been so special getting to know them over the years and seeing them grow up, seeing them mature, seeing them become adults, essentially, as they head on to the next chapter. So as we said to our seniors um, in, in our ensembles in the music department, First and foremost, we're looking to develop just good, hardworking people that are just going to be positive, contributing members of society. I have no doubt that these people before you will most certainly do that. So we'll go down the line here. And uh, Mr. Weaver, if you want to hand out roses for me. <clears throat> Our first senior on the list is Eliana Bush. She joined us uh, late in high school because we needed somebody to fill a spot. And we're so glad that she uh, chose to join us. She will be attending BGSU to pursue a degree in musical theater following high school. So let's uh, give uh, Eliana Bush a round of applause. Next up, we have Jalen Bussey. She's been uh, with us ever since she was a sixth grader, and uh, we're so happy about that. After high school, she plans to go to college to film and continue doing music through drum corps and indoor percussion. Let's give it up for Jalen Bussey. We love hearing and seeing about our students continuing on with music after high school. That's uh, the beauty of music. You don't have to major in it. You can always pursue it as a hobby. I know many of you in this room do that, and it's a beautiful thing. It's art, it helps our society, and makes it a more beautiful place. Next on our list, we have Kaya Carter. Kaya Carter um, has been with us since the beginning. She is going to attend Wright State to study nursing, a noble profession. Next up, we have Jackson Greenewalt, a resident drummer for the music department. He uh, plans on attending MTC for logistics and supply chain management and being a rock band. Give it up for Jackson Greenwald. <laughs> Next up we have Matus Leszewski. He joined us in high school along with his uh, brothers and uh, thank goodness they did because they are a uh, unbelievable gift to uh, our uh, music department and their musical abilities. Um, after graduation, Matus plans to attend Purdue University. I'm not a huge fan of Purdue, Purdue University as an IU grad, but we'll forgive him for that. And he'll be studying engineering, a great place for engineering. <clears throat> Next up, we have Raiden Sipes. He's been with us since the beginning and after graduation, attending the Ohio State University, majoring in astrophysics. It's always the French horn players that do the brainy things, so I'm not surprised by that. Next we have Josh Smith. Josh Smith uh, plans on getting a job and building a career in welding. Great alto saxophone player for us. And lastly, we have Terrace Wright. She's been with us since the beginning and is a trumpet player and will be attending the Wright State University to attend uh, nursing school, along with Kaya. Again, our school, our community, our ensembles would not be what they would be without you all as seniors at the helm, leading them and setting a positive example for the peers around you and for the, the future of our program. So we're so grateful for you and uh, thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Let's go make some music. One last round of applause for them. Thank you. 
as we're getting things set and ready for our next tune, Fable. I do uh, want to take a moment and, uh, number one, if you haven't uh, met or had a chance to see Mr. Weaver, this is uh, Mr. Weaver. He joined us on uh, faculty this year for the band, and I'm uh, very grateful to him, especially in the past two weeks as I was off with uh, paternity leave. So I really appreciate you, uh, Mr. Weaver, holding down the fort and uh, keeping things running the past two weeks. So thank you. Well, while Braylon is getting the timpani tuned up here, um, I wanted to take a second and thank you all for being here. Uh, I'd like to echo Mr. Patterson's sentiment about um, the importance of parents and the involvement of their children's music careers. Um, I, I really um, think it's, it's so, so important, and we thank you so much for uh, being here. My parents are also in the audience, so thank you to them for coming uh, to see my first concert here in Marion. First final concert, I guess I should say. Um, and uh, this next piece, I was going to read something for you here, just so you kind of have an idea of what the, uh, the intention behind this piece, the composer's intention behind this piece is. Uh, designed to play out like a fairy tale, Fable was inspired by ancient collections of children's stories, such as Aesop's Fables and Grimm's Fairy Tales. Mostly, mostly these stories were created to instill the values of making right and good decisions. However, many of these stories are often resolved in dark ways. This was especially true of the stories created by Jacob and Willem Grimm. Many of their stories were edited in later versions. Uh, this musical work was commissioned by the Dover Band Boosters to celebrate 100 years of Dover, Ohio band program. So uh, Chris Red is their director. Uh, that is uh, kind of a cool little tie-in that um, we share with this piece as we are also a fellow Ohio band. So um, I hope you enjoy this piece entitled Fable.
At this time, we would like to represent or uh, announce our award recipients for the band side of things here. As with every year, this uh, is a struggle as we've developed such positive relationships with these students over the years and built a, a bond that will is it's just very special to all of us. So things that we look for in our award recipients, number one, we look for uh, students that are obviously positive contributing members of the band ensembles here in our school, and individuals that who, when they are not present or not at a practice or absent from school, we feel the fact that they aren't there because there's, a, there's just a hole missing. There's a, there's a component missing that just uh, will not allow things to happen the way they normally would. So we have, uh, one has been uh, announced last week, and that is the uh, top honor that our school gives for that. So we'll just go ahead and again announce uh, the Alt Department honor. Mrs. Pashevsky, if you could stand so we can recognize you for that achievement. Thanks, Matus. He's got, he's got more musicianship in his pinky finger than a lot of us have in our whole bodies. So he's just a truly natural musician. He's grown up around music his entire life, and it definitely shows in all of our ensembles. So we're, we're so proud of him and um, the confidence that he has and the leadership skills that he has to bring to the table for our, for our program. So thank you very much, Matus. Our uh, three band honors. First one we'll uh, announce is the Patrick Gilmore Award. And this recipient has been with us uh, for the long haul. She's been uh, in our percussion section, and she's been in the, the marching ensemble for six years, which is very uncommon. But we, we, we start a handful of eighth graders, but it's rare for us to start something in the seventh grade. So she's been with, a, with us all that time, and she's done a little bit of everything. She's done some mallets for us, she's done some bass drum, some snare drum, you name it, she was moving around everywhere in the back. Uh, she participates in an uh, indoor drumline ensemble outside of the school day with an uh, independent group. And uh, we're just so proud of how she's uh, invested so much in music and percussion. And we are so pleased to announce our uh, Patrick Gilmore winner as Jalen Bussey. If you could come forward. And our top honor for a student in at Harding High School is the John Philip Souza Award winner, famous march composer. And this student, again, they just bring so much to the table. They bring uh, positive energy, intelligence, leadership, um, integrity, and just uh, an, an initiative that's not common to see in a student at this uh, level in high school. So we are, we're so proud and we will definitely miss this student as they head on to their next uh, steps here. But we're so proud to announce our John Philip Sousa Award winner as Raiden Sipes. All right, we have one more uh, program selection for you, but before we get on to that last piece, I just do want to go over a few announcements with you. Uh, number one, following this, we're going to have a parent meeting. It should kick off at 5 p.m., and uh, the goal of that meeting is just to get, uh, get you a copy of the schedule if it wasn't already distributed at home. Uh, we'll collect a uh, $50 deposit for next year's ensemble, go through some dates, expectations, that kind of thing for, for next year's ensemble. And again, that will be right after this at, at 5 p.m. So uh, please uh, plan on attending if you're at all able. Uh, other things, we, we will have the students report for the exam period this year. That will be our uh, drum major auditions. We'll have them conduct the ensemble and do some, some things for us on that day. So all students plan on uh, reporting for the exam period. And then uh, commencement, the graduation ceremony, the band and the choir both do perform for that. 
So the commencement will either be at the stadium if there's not rain, or at the Coliseum if there is rain. So we'll know the week of based on the weather and how that's progressing. But uh, commencement's at 2 p.m. We'll have the students report to, at 1 p.m. wherever the location is looking. And then final thing for uh, this year's ensemble, on Memorial Day, we uh, perform for the ceremony that is at the Veterans Park. And that will be a 10 a.m. report time, 11 a.m. events, just, just like it was last year. So we won't march in the parade or anything like that. But that'll be at 10 a.m. And we'll have a, um, at the next meeting, we'll have a hard copy of, of all the days. Okay, okay well, uh, thank you so much for being here today and for your support of your children. They're wonderful uh, additions, and we're glad we get to spend some time with them. And this last number is entitled Selections from How to Train Your Dragon.